those macroeconomists were often called upon to understand and to make sense of unexpected changes in the economy and how they're going to affect uh, various variables that we're interested in, such as the rate of inflation or the growth rate of GDP. Suppose the Bank of England were to raise interest rates by 25 basis points. What's the effect of that going to be on the rate of inflation, on GDP growth, or employment? Suppose that oil prices were to rise by $10 per barrel. What's the effect of that going to be on GDP growth or inflation? Those are the difficult questions, the bread and butter questions that macroeconomists need to answer, but difficult questions to answer. All of these different quantities that we're interested in in the economy, oil prices, interest rates, inflation, and GDP, they're all jointly determined. The economy is one big system that works together. And if the economy is one big system that works together, you can't simply look at a change in one of these factors, such as oil prices, and then attribute other changes to that. Because it could be that oil prices went up because of the other factors affecting it. This makes it super complicated. The trick is, how do we tease out those shocks? How do we tease out those unexpected changes and use those unexpected changes to, to quantify the effect of an oil surprise or a monetary policy surprise on other variables of interest? That's the technical challenge. This problem that these variables in the economy are jointly determined is one that was recognized 100 years ago by a gentleman named Philip Wright. What Philip Wright realized was that if he was interested in tracing out a demand curve, he would need a variable that was shifting supply but not shifting demand. The variable he decided to use was rainfall in agricultural regions. More rain means the supply curve is farther out. Periods of less rain means the supply curve is farther in. As a result, he was able to estimate the elasticity of demand. Going back to the oil price example, how do we find out the effect of an unexpected increase in oil prices on the rest of the economy? Well, to do that, we need to find that unexpected increase in oil prices. Not every oil price increase is unexpected, but some are. Suppose that there's a pipeline explosion. The pipeline explosion will result in a supply reduction. That supply reduction will increase prices and that increase in prices will then trace through a series of effects on the economy. As econometricians, we can exploit experiments like that to trace out effects like an oil price increase. I've talked about oil prices, but it's not just oil price shocks. We're interested in monetary policy shocks, we're interested in productivity shocks, we're interested in a whole host of shocks across the economy. Once you've got this idea in your head, you can start looking for things that provide unexpected and surprise movements in monetary policy, in productivity, in other variables in the economy. And we can use those unexpected, unexpected surprises to trace out all of these effects. That makes for a very exciting research program ahead. <music>